Today I'm gonna talk about calling people crazy. This is a word. This is a world premiere. This is a word. So hey, this video is part of a series and an ongoing debate between myself and Swayze Foster of Unnatural Vegan. This video should stand alone even if you haven't been following the debate, as the points I'm going to be making don't require any previous knowledge. Obviously those who've been following the debate will have a greater sense of the drama, but hopefully you'll still find it useful. Now you've likely heard it before, and perhaps have done it yourself. You're having an argument with someone and you suddenly find yourself at an impasse. It's clear the person is not impressed with your knowledge knowledge or your arguments, perhaps they don't understand them, you're in danger of losing because the person is not convinced in spite of the mountain of evidence that you've presented. Or you may actually have to walk away in a stalemate. So in a desperate attempt to secure your victory, you turn into your most loving and compassionate self and start acting out of concern for the person who just moments ago was your sworn enemy. No longer are you concerned with winning. All that matters is that this person, you can honestly give a flying leap about, maintain their credibility and social standing. You only care about their well-being. You swallow your pride and you tell them, it doesn't matter to me what you think, but other people might think you're crazy if you say things like that. Or worse, you're acting crazy. Or worse, you're gonna make us all look crazy. I've certainly used that tactic. It's me at my intellectual laziest. I'm sure there's a fancy name for it according to the rules of rhetoric, but who cares? Even if we're not playing by some handbook, it's pretty dishonest. First of all, I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I have no place diagnosing someone's mental condition. Also, why is having a mental condition a sign that a person is out of touch with reality, or less intelligent, or less capable of arguing a point than someone who's considered sane. Calling someone crazy might just be a sign that you're holding onto your own subjective concept of normalcy. Having your own concept of normalcy is fine until you start feeling entitled to impose it on others, even if it might be considered the standard according to the status quo. It's certainly dishonest pretending it's for the other person's own good, when it's really an attempt to control that person and punish them through social sanctioning. Let's face it, crying crazy is pretty much the same as crying racist. Even if you believe it, it isn't gonna help your case. It's a veiled way to threaten isolation and marginalization. It also stigmatizes people who do have mental illness. And it's a way to shrug off empathy and our own responsibility in the situation. It frames that person as incapable and somehow a victim. Ironically, calling someone else crazy is a way of accusing them of victimizing you. Yeah, we're calling out the bad behavior of the other person, but we're really just saying, stop subjecting me to your crazy ideas and your crazy behavior, it's making me uncomfortable. And it gives you a reason to fear them and feel unsafe around them. You're actually being the victim. How dare that person make me feel things, or ask me to feel things, or ask me to change. I don't like change, change makes me feel uncomfortable. So I find it interesting that a certain YouTuber that prides themselves on being pragmatic and grounded in science would use a tactic like this, along with telling people they look like assholes, assigning people's motivations, basing credibility on tone and mannerisms, offering tips on how to behave in social situations, and promising improved outcomes, even talking about karma, which is surprising coming from an atheist, being a stickler for meaning and yet misinterpreting others, or entire concepts like intersectionality and social justice, criticizing others for making unsubstantiated claims and then doing that very thing, sometimes in the same sentence, engaging in pretty much every tactic they've criticized in other vegan advocates and other activists from pseudoscience to outright shaming people or labeling people as crazy. Denying a dying person's last wish because it was more important to be right than to be compassionate. But hey, no one is perfect. I certainly am not, not by a long shot. I'm gonna make a request. The animals aren't free, and in the last 70 plus years since the founding of the vegan society, we've seen an increase in the consumption of animals. How about we stop making claims about what kind of activism is best? until one form of activism is proven to be 100% effective all of the time. Sure, we can talk about what we prefer, what works for us, but let's assume that people are doing their best and that it's all trial and error and that we make the road by walking, to borrow from the Spanish proverb. Let's leave the crazy talk to doctors with their patients. And let's celebrate the fact that there are all kinds of people with all kinds of beliefs and cultural backgrounds and personalities and quirks and knowledge and experience. Radicals, hippies, geeks, athletes, 
couch potatoes, travelers, homebodies, and even if my method of activism only gets one or two people to go vegan, and they get one or two people to go vegan, pretty soon that's a lot of vegans. What do you think? Are there activists you think are harming the movement? Or should we be less critical and more grateful that everyone's making a contribution? Tomorrow, I'm gonna talk about dismantling the system and what we should replace it with. So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it, share, comment, subscribe. And this is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself the way